Do you feel lonely, isolated, or unhappy with your life? Do you wish you had someone to share your joys and sorrows with? Do you think that happiness depends on external factors such as wealth, fame, or relationships? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then you might benefit from learning about Stoicism, an ancient philosophy that teaches us how to live well and be content with ourselves, regardless of our circumstances. Stoicism is not a religion, a dogma, or a set of rules. It is a practical and rational way of thinking and acting based on the principles of wisdom, courage, justice, and self-control. It helps us to face the challenges of life with dignity and grace and to cultivate inner peace and happiness. In this video, we will explore 15 Stoic lessons on how to be happy alone, drawn from the writings and teachings of some of the most influential Stoic philosophers, such as Zeno, Seneca, Epictetus, and Marcus Aurelius. These lessons are not meant to be followed blindly, but to be adapted and applied to your own situation and needs. They are also not meant to discourage you from seeking or enjoying the company of others, but to help you become more independent and self-reliant, and to appreciate the value of solitude. Let's begin. Lesson 1. Happiness is within you. The first and most fundamental lesson of Stoicism is that happiness is not something that comes from outside, but something that comes from within. Happiness is not a matter of having or not having things, but of how we use and judge them. Happiness is not a matter of what happens to us, but of how we respond to it. As Epictetus, a former slave who became a renowned Stoic teacher, said, happiness and freedom begin with a clear understanding of one principle. Some things are within our control and some things are not. It is only after you have faced up to this fundamental rule and learned to distinguish between what you can and can't control that inner tranquility and outer effectiveness become possible. What are the things that are within our control? According to the Stoics, only our own thoughts, opinions, judgments, desires, aversions and actions. These are the things that we can control and therefore the things that we should focus on and improve. What are the things that are not within our control? Everything else, our body, our health, our wealth, our reputation, our relationships, our emotions, and the events of the world. These are the things that we cannot control, and therefore the things that we should accept and not worry about. By understanding this distinction, we can free ourselves from the anxiety, frustration and disappointment that come from trying to control or depend on things that are not up to us. We can also free ourselves from the fear, envy and greed that come from attaching our happiness to things that are not ours. Instead, we can focus on developing our inner resources such as reason, wisdom, virtue and character. These are the things that are truly ours and that no one can take away from us. These are the things that make us happy and that enable us to deal with whatever life throws at us. As Marcus Aurelius, the Roman emperor and Stoic philosopher wrote in his personal diary, very little is needed to make a happy life. It is all within yourself, in your way of thinking. Lesson two, learn to love yourself. The second lesson of Stoicism is that we should learn to love ourselves, not in a narcissistic or selfish way, but in a healthy and rational way. We should love ourselves as we are, with our strengths and weaknesses, our virtues and vices, our successes and failures. We should love ourselves as a part of nature, with a unique role and purpose in the cosmic order. We should love ourselves as a friend, with kindness, compassion and respect. As Seneca, the Roman statesman and Stoic writer advised, What progress have I made? I am beginning to be my own friend. Why is it important to be our own friend? Because if we are not, we will be our own enemy. 
We will be harsh, critical and unforgiving of ourselves. We will be insecure, unhappy and dissatisfied with ourselves. We will be dependent, needy and desperate for the approval and affection of others. But if we are our own friend, we will be gentle, supportive and encouraging of ourselves. We will be confident, happy and content with ourselves. We will be independent, self-sufficient and generous with the love and attention of others. How can we be our own friend? By practicing self-care, self-awareness and self-improvement. By taking care of our physical, mental and emotional needs. By observing and understanding our thoughts, feelings and actions. By striving to become better and wiser every day. As Epictetus said, no one is free who is not master of himself. Lesson 3. Seek Solitude The third lesson of Stoicism is that we should seek solitude, not as a way of escaping or avoiding the world, but as a way of engaging and enriching ourselves. Solitude is not loneliness, but aloneness. Solitude is not a state of isolation, but a state of introspection, Solitude is not a problem, but a privilege. As Seneca wrote, we must reserve a little back shop, all our own, entirely free, wherein to establish our real liberty and our principal retreat and solitude. Here we shall find no hindrance from consorting with ourselves, so long as we can catch a glimpse of ourselves. Why is it beneficial to seek solitude? Because solitude allows us to connect with ourselves to reflect on our lives, to examine our values, to clarify our goals, to cultivate our passions, to express our creativity, to expand our knowledge, to deepen our wisdom, to strengthen our character, to grow our virtue. Solitude also allows us to disconnect from the noise, the distractions, the temptations, the pressures, the expectations, the opinions, the judgments, the conflicts, the dramas, the troubles of the world. Solitude allows us to find peace, calm, balance, harmony, joy, and happiness within ourselves. As Marcus Aurelius said, people seek retreats for themselves in the country, by the sea, or in the mountains. You are very much in the habit of yearning for those same things. But this is entirely the trait of a base person when you can, at any moment, find such a retreat in yourself. For nowhere can you find a more peaceful and less busy retreat than in your own soul, especially if on close inspection it is filled with ease, which I say is nothing more than being well-ordered. Treat yourself often to this retreat and be renewed. Lesson 4. Enjoy your own company. The fourth lesson of Stoicism is that we should enjoy our own company, not as a substitute or a consolation for the company of others, but as a source and a complement of the company of others. We should enjoy our own company, not because we are bored or lonely, but because we are interested and curious. We should enjoy our own company, not because we have nothing to do, but because we have many things to do. As Seneca said, I never found the companion that was so companionable as solitude. How can we enjoy our own company? By engaging in activities that stimulate our mind, nourish our soul and satisfy our spirit. By reading, writing, learning, meditating, praying, creating, exploring, discovering, inventing, experimenting, playing and having fun. By doing things that we love, that we are good at that we want to improve at, that we can share with others. By enjoying our own company, we can enrich our lives, enhance our personalities and increase our happiness. We can also improve our relationships as we will be more confident, more attractive, more interesting and more generous with others. We will not need others to complete us, but to complement us. We will not cling to others, but appreciate them. We will not depend on others, but support them. As Epictetus said, He is a wise man who does not grieve for the things which he has not, but rejoices for those which he has. Lesson 5. Be self-reliant. 
The fifth lesson of Stoicism is that we should be self-reliant, not in an arrogant or stubborn way, but in a humble and prudent way. We should be self-reliant, not because we are superior or invincible, but because we are responsible and capable. We should be self-reliant, not because we reject or ignore the help of others, but because we appreciate and respect the help of others. As Marcus Aurelius said, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. What does it mean to be self-reliant? It means to rely on our own reason, judgment and conscience, rather than on the authority, tradition or opinion of others. It means to rely on our own resources, skills and abilities, rather than on the wealth, power or status of others. It means to rely on our own actions, efforts and choices rather than on the luck. By being self-reliant, we can achieve a state of independence, of freedom, of autonomy, in which we are not enslaved, constrained or limited by the things that are not in our control, by the things that are not ours, by the things that are not good. We can also improve our self-esteem, enhance our self-confidence and increase our self-respect. We can also cultivate our virtue as we practice courage, responsibility and self-reliance. As Epictetus said, no man is free who is not master of himself. Lesson 6. Be grateful. The sixth lesson of Stoicism is that we should be grateful, not in a passive or complacent way, but in an active and mindful way. We should be grateful, not because we have everything we want, but because we have everything we need. We should be grateful, not because we ignore or deny the problems of life, but because we acknowledge and appreciate the blessings of life. As Seneca said, true happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future, not to amuse ourselves with either hopes or fears, but to rest satisfied with what we have, which is sufficient, for he that is so wants nothing. How can we be grateful? By practicing gratitude, a simple and powerful exercise that consists of recognizing and expressing our appreciation for the things that we have, the people that we love, the experiences that we enjoy, and the opportunities that we encounter. By practicing gratitude, we can shift our perspective from what we lack to what we have, from what we complain to what we celebrate, from what we fear to what we hope. By being grateful, we can increase our happiness, improve our health, strengthen our relationships and enhance our well-being. We can also reduce our stress, anger, envy and resentment and cope better with the challenges and difficulties of life. As Marcus Aurelius said, when you arise in the morning, think of what a precious privilege it is to be alive, to breathe, to think, to enjoy, to love. Lesson 7. Be generous. The seventh lesson of Stoicism is that we should be generous, not in a wasteful or reckless way, but in a wise and responsible way. We should be generous, not because we have more than we need, but because we have enough to share. We should be generous, not because we expect something in return, but because we value the act of giving. As Seneca said, we should give as we would receive, cheerfully, quickly, and without hesitation. For there is no grace in a benefit that sticks to the fingers. What does it mean to be generous? It means to give freely and gladly of our time, energy, money, knowledge, skills, talents, or anything else that we have or can offer to help, support or benefit others without expecting or demanding anything in return. It means to give not only to those who are close to us or who are in need of us, but also to those who are distant from us or who are different from us. It means to give not only when we are asked or when we feel like it, but also when we are not or when we don't. By being generous, we can make a positive difference in the lives of others and in the world at large. We can also enrich our own lives 
as we experience the joy, satisfaction and fulfillment that come from giving. We can also cultivate our virtue as we practice kindness, compassion and generosity. As Epictetus said, no one is truly poor who has something to give. Lesson 8. Be Resilient The eighth lesson of Stoicism is that we should be resilient, not in a rigid or stubborn way, but in a flexible and adaptable way. We should be resilient, not because we are immune or indifferent to the hardships of life, but because we are prepared and ready to face them. We should be resilient, not because we deny or suppress our emotions, but because we manage and master them. As Marcus Aurelius said, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. What does it mean to be resilient? It means to have the ability to bounce back from adversity, to overcome challenges, to cope with stress, to endure pain, to recover from loss, to learn from failure, to grow from feedback, to change for the better. It means to have the courage to face our fears, the confidence to pursue our goals, the persistence to keep trying, the patience to wait for results, the optimism to hope for success. By being resilient, we can achieve our potential, fulfill our purpose, and realize our dreams. We can also improve our well-being as we reduce our suffering, increase our happiness, and enhance our quality of life. We can also develop our character as we practice fortitude, perseverance, and resilience. As Seneca said, difficulties strengthen the mind as labor does the body. Lesson 9. Be Moderate The ninth lesson of Stoicism is that we should be moderate, not in a boring or bland way, but in a balanced and harmonious way. We should be moderate, not because we are afraid or ashamed of our desires, but because we are aware and mindful of our needs. We should be moderate, not because we deprive or restrict ourselves, but because we satisfy and regulate ourselves. As Epictetus said, nothing is enough for the man to whom enough is too little. What does it mean to be moderate? It means to have the ability to control our impulses, to restrain our appetites, to limit our indulgences, to avoid excesses, to choose wisely, to act rationally, to live simply. It means to have the wisdom to know what is enough, what is necessary, what is beneficial, what is harmful, what is good, what is evil. By being moderate, we can achieve a state of equilibrium, of harmony, of peace, between ourselves and the world, between our body and our soul, between our pleasure and our pain. We can also protect our health, preserve our wealth, and prevent our vices. We can also cultivate our virtue as we practice temperance, moderation, and self-control. As Marcus Aurelius said, the happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts. Therefore, guard accordingly and take care that you entertain no notions unsuitable to virtue and reasonable nature. Lesson 10. Be rational. The tenth lesson of Stoicism is that we should be rational, not in a cold or emotionless way, but in a clear and objective way. We should be rational not because we disregard or distrust our feelings, but because we examine and understand them. We should be rational not because we ignore or deny the reality of life, but because we observe and interpret it. As Seneca said, the first and most necessary topic in philosophy is the practical application of principles, such as, we ought not to lie. The second is that of demonstrations, such as, what is the origin of our obligation not to lie? The third, that which gives strength and logical connection to the other two, such as, what is the nature of truth? What is the nature of falsehood? What does it mean to be rational? It means to have the ability to use our reason, to think logically, to analyze critically, to evaluate objectively, to judge fairly, to decide wisely, to act accordingly. It means to have the knowledge to distinguish between facts and opinions, between evidence and assumptions, 
between causes and effects, between means and ends, between right and wrong. By being rational, we can achieve a state of understanding, of insight, of wisdom about ourselves and the world, about our nature and our purpose, about our problems and our solutions, about our actions and their consequences. We can also improve our skills, enhance our abilities and increase our effectiveness. We can also cultivate our virtue as we practice prudence, rationality and wisdom. As Epictetus said, don't explain your philosophy, embody it. Lesson 11. Be virtuous. The eleventh lesson of Stoicism is that we should be virtuous, not in a moralistic or dogmatic way, but in an ethical and universal way. We should be virtuous, not because we follow or obey the rules of society, religion or law, but because we adhere and conform to the laws of nature, reason and conscience. We should be virtuous, not because we fear or avoid the punishment of others, but because we seek and embrace the reward of ourselves. As Marcus Aurelius said, Waste no more time arguing what a good man should be. Be one. What does it mean to be virtuous? It means to have the ability to act in accordance with our true nature, our highest potential, our best self. It means to have the excellence of character, the goodness of soul, the beauty of spirit that make us human and that make us divine. It means to have the qualities of wisdom, courage, justice and self-control that constitute the essence of virtue and that define the goal of life. By being virtuous, we can achieve a state of happiness, of fulfillment, of eudaimonia that is not dependent on external factors, but on internal ones. We can also contribute to the common good, to the welfare of humanity, to the harmony of the cosmos. We can also develop our nature as we realize our purpose and as we fulfill our destiny. As Seneca said, virtue is nothing else than right reason. Lesson 12. Be present. The twelfth lesson of Stoicism is that we should be present, not in a distracted or absent way, but in a focused and attentive way. We should be present not because we forget or neglect the past and the future, but because we remember and respect the present. We should be present, not because we avoid or escape the reality of life, but because we embrace and experience it. As Marcus Aurelius said, do not dream of the future, concentrate the mind on the present moment. What does it mean to be present? It means to have the ability to pay attention, to be aware, to be mindful of what is happening here and now, of what we are doing, thinking, feeling and sensing, of what others are saying, doing and feeling. It means to have the skill to focus, to concentrate, to immerse ourselves in the task at hand, in the activity we are engaged in, in the moment we are living. It means to have the attitude to appreciate, to enjoy, to savor the beauty, the wonder, the joy of the present moment. By being present, we can achieve a state of flow, of engagement, of fulfillment, in which we lose track of time, of ourselves, of our problems, and become one with what we are doing, with who we are with, with where we are. We can also improve our performance, enhance our creativity, and increase our productivity. We can also develop our awareness as we observe, learn, and grow from the present moment. As Seneca said, life is very short and anxious for those who forget the past, neglect the present, and fear the future. Lesson 13. Be Stoic. The thirteenth lesson of Stoicism is that we should be Stoic, not in a passive or indifferent way, but in an active and passionate way. We should be Stoic, not because we are apathetic or emotionless, but because we are enthusiastic and rational. We should be Stoic, not because we are fatalistic or pessimistic, but because we are realistic and optimistic. As Epictetus said, 
Don't seek for everything to happen as you wish it would, but rather wish that everything happens as it actually will, then your life will flow well. What does it mean to be stoic? It means to have the ability to live according to the principles and practices of stoicism, to apply the lessons and teachings of stoicism to our daily lives, to embody the values and virtues of stoicism in our thoughts, words and actions. It means to have the passion to learn, to study, to practice, to improve, to master the art of living well, the science of happiness, the philosophy of Stoicism. It means to have the commitment to follow, to emulate, to admire, to honor the examples and models of Stoicism, the sages and heroes of Stoicism, the masters and teachers of Stoicism. By being Stoic, we can achieve a state of excellence, of virtue, of eudaimonia, that is not dependent on external factors, but on internal ones. We can also contribute to the common good, to the welfare of humanity, to the harmony of the cosmos. We can also develop our nature as we realize our purpose and as we fulfill our destiny. As Marcus Aurelius said, the art of living is more like wrestling than dancing, insofar as it stands ready against the accidental and the unforeseen and is not apt to fall. Lesson 14. Be Yourself. The 14th lesson of Stoicism is that we should be ourselves, not in a conformist or imitative way, but in an authentic and original way. We should be ourselves, not because we are perfect or superior, but because we are unique and valuable. We should be ourselves, not because we reject or oppose the society, culture or tradition, but because we respect and appreciate our individuality, personality and identity. As Seneca said, to thine own self be true, and it must follow, as the night the day, thou canst not then be false to any man. What does it mean to be ourselves? It means to have the ability to express, to manifest, to reveal our true nature, our true self, our true essence, to ourselves and to others, without fear, without shame, without pretense, it means to have the skill to discover, to explore, to develop our talents, our passions, our interests, our strengths, our weaknesses, our potentials, our limits. It means to have the attitude to accept, to love, to celebrate ourselves as we are with our flaws and virtues, our successes and failures, our joys and sorrows. By being ourselves, we can achieve a state of authenticity of integrity, of congruence, in which we are consistent, coherent and honest with ourselves and with others, with our thoughts and with our actions, with our values and with our goals. We can also improve our relationships as we are more confident, more attractive, more interesting and more generous with others. We will not pretend to be someone else but be who we are. We will not compare ourselves to others but appreciate ourselves. As Epictetus said, know first who you are and then adorn yourself accordingly. Lesson 15. Be happy. The 15th and final lesson of Stoicism is that we should be happy, not in a superficial or temporary way, but in a deep and lasting way. We should be happy not because we have everything we want, but because we want everything we have. We should be happy not because we avoid or escape the troubles of life, but because we face and overcome them. As Marcus Aurelius said, very little is needed to make a happy life. It is all within yourself, in your way of thinking. What does it mean to be happy? It means to have the ability to live well, to live according to nature, to live according to reason, to live according to virtue. It means to have the skill to find meaning to find purpose, to find fulfillment in what we do, in who we are, in why we are. It means to have the attitude to enjoy, to appreciate, to savor the moments, the people, the things that make life worth living. By being happy, we can achieve a state of eudaimonia, of well-being, of flourishing. 
that is not dependent on external factors, but on internal ones. We can also contribute to the happiness of others, as we are more kind, more compassionate, more generous, and more grateful. We will not take happiness for granted, but cherish it. We will not seek happiness outside, but inside. As Seneca said, the happy life is to have a mind that is free, lofty, fearless, and steadfast. A mind that is placed beyond the reach of fear, beyond the reach of desire, that counts virtue the only good, baseness the only evil, and all else but a worthless mass of things, which come and go without increasing or diminishing the highest good, and neither subtract any part from the happy life, nor add any part to it. These are the 15 Stoic lessons on how to be happy alone. They are not the only lessons, nor the final ones, but they are a good start, a good guide, a good reminder for anyone who wants to live a happier and better life with or without others. They are the lessons that I have learned and that I am still learning from the ancient and timeless wisdom of Stoicism. They are the lessons that I hope you have learned and that you will keep learning from this video. Thank you for watching and remember, be stoic and be happy.